Hi everybody, welcome to this week's demonstration here on the beauty of pastel. Today we are going to escape to the ocean and paint some lovely ocean waves and some beach sand. I hope you enjoy. And I am using my 500 grit UART unmounted right now. And I was looking at the reference photo and sketching in the major shapes, where the wave, where the crest of the wave is, where it meets the beach line, how the crest of the wave and also the bottom of the wave, those were the main lines that I was looking for, trying to avoid too much detail, blurring my vision as I'm looking at the reference to see where those major lines are this to be a higher key painting and so I chose to use kind of a light mauve carbothello it's just kind of a mauve color it's almost like a sand color just to sketch in those shapes and then I'm also putting in some fun colors in the sand with the purples and then also of course right now the pink which is a complementary color to the blue of the ocean that I'm wanting use eventually using my my alcohol wash with my fan brush and I'm kind of smushing for lack of better word I'm pressing a little bit harder with my fan brush than I normally do when I'm painting trees because I don't need to I don't need the branchy effects necessarily that I sometimes can get with the fan brush when I'm painting trees but I am wanting to push a little harder you can even tell that I'm doing that and I'm not using a flat brush right now mainly because my flat brush picks up a lot of pastel or a lot of the new pastel and moves it around a little bit more the fan brush lends itself to creating a little bit more transparency within this alcohol wash underpainting you can tell right now that that the area that I did not put any pastel in that is going to be the brighter areas of my way the the foamy white water and so I want to leave I'm, I'm leaving that void of pastel right now pulling, blending those two areas, the lower part sand and the higher part of the water together, letting those, that alcohol kind of drip around, creating some fun edges within, within that area, and then now it's dry. Okay, the first things that I am really going to look at are where am I, similarly to how I do dark to light, when I am painting trees, I'm going to try to move dark to brighter values where are the shadow areas of the wave? Yes, water is transparent, but obviously there are areas in it that are darker, areas in it that are lighter. Looking at the reference photo, adding in color, there is always a stage in pastels where you're you think okay this this these aren't my final strokes i'm building i'm building layers building color and so you have to put down color that then you can then build upon this is a terry ludwig very true green still looking at the reference photo to see where those darker shadows are i am not a photorealist i'm not gonna try to make every single ripple look exactly like the photo. I just want to tell the major shapes and the main story of this. Adding and subtracting blues and greens together. I blended it with a little bit of a pipe foam. Seeing how this wave is flowing up and down and up and down. I haven't worked at all, of course, on the wave itself, the, the crashing um, white part. And I haven't done anything with the sand yet, but that's coming pretty soon. Working on a very pretty limited palette of blues and greens. Right now, I'm actually looking at the wave itself, the, the crashing wave, because even though I left areas of that void of pastel, that crashing wave in, it, in of itself has darks in it. Trying to put in those, those highlights within the wave, what's behind the crashing part of the wave. With that blue, really carefully looking, not trying to be too detailed here, but also trying to follow the shape 
of that of that white water as it as it falls over onto the sand. These are so much fun to paint. It's just such a different type of shape than a tree or a bush or flat more flat waters. This is a very cool green that's also within that same family of value but a little bit brighter. I don't want to add those really really vibrant whites yet because those are going to be more of the final highlights. And so this is the same concept as I talk about all the time working dark to light. A lot of Terry Ludwig's here. Here's another blue that I'm adding into the base of where that where those that white water will be hitting. Also, I'm really looking at the photo here and noticing how cool the greens are. And you can see that I'm kind of pulling it down. That crest of that wave right before it hits the sand and becomes white. Pulling that, that's a that's a new pastel, and I have a lot of tooth left on my paper, and so I'm looking at the at the calligraphy of this this wave to see how it's flowing so I can convey that realistically while also being painterly. Of course, this is a sandier color, so I'm gonna start working a little bit on the beach. What the water, the effect of the water has done to it. And so this is not the brightest white color, but it does help start to lay down those brighter areas and how that water is splashing upwards and crashing down, mingling it in with those that you can see the dark blues, rolling the pastel, guiding it along on its edge, really using my hand to twist around to create just that tiny little area right there is highlighted. And I want to keep that same type of effect and, and show those marks that are different. That, that helps so much. The different marks, it just creates a more interesting piece. Pinpointing, blending in, tapping with my finger, how that just helps with that, that water spray that's being created. So now I'm stepping back, reassessing my palette. I want to I wanted add a little bit more, of course, to the ocean waves. I'm not finished with them. I want to define them. I want to adjust the shapes of the wave, making sure that I'm, I'm being truthful to what it is I'm painting. There's a little bit of water Water that's coming up of course as a, as a wave crashes down it it pushes up onto the sand and then falls backwards and so there's always a little bit of water also on the sand and some very light blue this is a Terry Ludwig you can just see the different marks that I'm making with the size I'm using that square side of the Terry Ludwig making those more linear marks. I'm also wanting to pull some of that, that color down into the sand and also darken the edge of where that wave is cresting over and you can kind of see the shadow there with those greens and adding in a little bit of shadows right there. Now I want to start working a little bit on my sand and so I'm at, going to start adding in some sand colors, some grays, kind of knock down that, that violet a little bit. I love how the violet peeks through, but I do want to make it a little sand, more sand colored. I'm also refining those, those shadow areas of the crashing waves, stepping back, evaluating. I know I say that a lot, making sure that what I'm painting is accurate and believable, but also painterly. I often get questions. How do I become more painterly? How do I choose colors that are that are more exciting or that it's interpretive color versus actual color. What I say to that is a lot of it is interesting underpaintings and also not, don't kill your underpainting. Let it live, let it breathe. I, I really chose pretty analogous colors. It's violets 
in the in the in the sand with the blues and the greens and all of those are next to each other on the color wheel so that in of itself helps you interpret your color so when you're doing an underpainting look on either side of what you're painting are you eventually going to paint green or, or blue then choose what is next to it as your underpainting and let that breathe through let that that shine let let those areas still show you work hard on your underpainting so you don't want to cover the whole thing up it just helps your painting have a little bit of life a little bit on the sand off camera and so I wanted to show you how this painting changed with these up close views um, right here I added some creamy white you can see the differences if you really want, look carefully how the there's blue the bluer lighter wave also with this creamier areas of the wave and those little tiny marks and also I added more of a traditional sand colors The painting changed a little bit. Adding those little tiny effects like this gray pencil, I added some, pulled down some of those same colors that are in that crashing wave. But then I wanted to define that water effect against the sand. And so I'm just adding those tiny, tiny, fine little marks to show that water pulling up onto, onto, the, onto the sand. Um, of course, this was a piece that is a little bit more of a panoramic, which I think really lends itself to an ocean wave since an ocean wave is so long and I didn't really want to include a horizon line or any sky in this piece. I wanted the wave to be the star of this show. I'm just going to add a few little final touches. Of course, inevitably, after I finish one of these videos, I always kind of tweak them as artists do we look at them for a couple days and think oh you know I think I'm gonna add a, one more little mark but I wanted to show just some of the water effect on top of that sand and so using some really light scumbling making some little dots and dashes will help you convey that yes there is water rushing up upon the sand making a little highlight right there on that on that water against the sand on the on the left hand side Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give this a like. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you can be notified when I have a new video. I also have support levels over on Patreon. If you would like this free content to keep coming out, you can visit my Patreon channel at patreon.com forward slash Bethany Fields. All the links are in the description. Thank you guys. See you soon.